Hey everybody, it's January 26, and that means we're reading John chapter 19, verses 16 through 30. This is kind of the, the crucifixion section of all that we're reading. And so uh, a lot could be said here. You probably heard a lot through all the Easter's in your year. Um, but when I read this, a couple things stick out. Um, first, we can see that, that Jesus was delivered, right? Very first 16, he was delivered. Pilate delivered an innocent man. He, he couldn't, he couldn't um, prove uh, everything that the Jews were saying, but he still handed him over uh, to the Jews uh, to be crucified. And then we can see at verse 17 at the place of the skull, uh, the Golgotha. Uh, I'm going to put a picture uh, in the video of showing you what this would have looked like um, um, back in their time. It's, it's a pretty cool picture. You'll see what it means when it says the place of the skull. Um, there's a, there's a uh, heel that literally looks like a skull, the eyes, the mouth, the nose. Um, and it's on the road coming into Jerusalem and passes all the way down to Jericho. Uh, so as people would come in, they would see this road lined with all kinds of people um, being crucified with robbers. And we can even see Jesus was um, crucified with two other people. Uh, and he was in the middle of them. What's interesting, though, when we think about Jesus and these two other people is really all of humanity um, is on Golgotha, right? We have the Savior, Jesus. We have the forgiven, which was the man that said, uh, you know, where Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And then we also have the man who is lost, right? So uh, all of humanity was represented right there on the hill of Golgotha. Uh, another little kind of neat thing as you're reading and as, as you study, um, you can see in verse 23 when it talks about, um, it spends in great detail about Jesus' clothes. And in verse 23, we can see um, it talks about Jesus' seamless tunic. Now, that might seem really weird, and the, they said that soldiers didn't want to rip it, and so they cast lots, right? They rolled dice for it. They kind of gambled to see who would win it. What's interesting is, is that Jesus is wearing the seamless tunic. And if you go all the way back to the Old Testament, um, to Exodus chapter 28, verses 31 and 32, we can see that only the high priest wears a seamless tunic. And this is just an interesting fact. that Jesus wasn't the high priest while he was on the earth, right? It, most Jews hated him and despised him, but yet he was the high priest. He was the ultimate high priest. So he wore the clothing of the high priest but nobody ever really knew it. It's just kind of a little interesting kind of fact that we see that even proves, um, even looking at Hebrews, talking about Jesus is our great high priest. Uh, and so um, proving some prophecy, um, but also reassuring uh, what Scripture says in Hebrews. Just an interesting fact. Um, uh, we also see in verse 27, um, as Jesus is on the cross, he looks down, he sees his mother Mary, uh, and uh, his sister Mary, and then Mary Magdalene, um, which is really the first woman at the tomb uh, on Resurrection Sunday. Uh, so he has three Marys there, and we can see that even on the cross, he doesn't care necessarily about his self that much. He's still caring for others. And so he tells John, the beloved disciple, him, the book that we're reading, um, to take care of my mother. And he says, you know, hey, here's your mother. Um, so even on the cross, he cared more about others than he did himself. Um, uh, verse 28, we can see, um, it says that knowing this, um, knowing that it was all finished, right? Jesus knew that, that it all came to finish. He, he realized that he knew uh, that salvation has been complete. And so it's just kind of an interesting moment that Jesus um, has known at some point um, God has laid all the sins upon Jesus, and he bore that uh, sinlessly. Uh, and then we can see in verse 29, it says that he was thirsty. Now, we remember um, the passage before this um, that he did not um, take um, the wine um, that was kind of laced with medicine to, to make him, uh, to, to kind of numb his pain, but he's about to die. And so he's taking this, uh, this diluted sour wine, um, basically diluted with wire, uh, with water, soured. It's not fermented all the way, um, but he's doing this because basically he's, his throat's dry, his mouth is dry, and he needs to make um, this ultimate proclamation that we see in verse thir thirty, 
where he says, it is finished, to telestai, right? To telestai, that's what that means, it is finished. Um, and, and when we see that it is finished, it is, is almost kind of like the cry of a, of a warrior, the cry of an athlete, the cl- cry of a winner. It's kind of like you've worked so hard that marathon runners run and run and their legs are breaking down and they made it and they're just let out this huge scream, oh, I've done it. That's what tetelestai means, right? Uh, it is finished. I am done. And what's interesting is we see at the very end, verse 30, where he says that it's finished. He said he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Now, we don't think about this a lot, but really Jesus is, he is fully man, but yet he is also fully God. And so Jesus could not die unless he gave up his spirit. Does that make sense? His human body could die, but but his godly presence would have taken over. So not only did he have to go to the cross, but he had to give up his spirit. He had to want to die. Uh, and so we can see that in verse 30 where he says that he gave up his spirit uh, and that he died. And so uh, just amazing as we read this in January. These, these will come alive so much uh, uh, for me as a pastor, when we're going into Easter, um, we even kind of got a series planned for Easter, kind of walking through the last events um, in a special uh, service on Good Friday. Um, and so these are the times that we really read this, but it's really interesting and really great to read um, these passages in January and just remember all that Jesus did for us. Hope you're enjoying this. Don't forget, today we are praying for the person that you are inviting to church this weekend. Who are you inviting? Uh, it is it is Tuesday, and you got all week to invite somebody. So call them, text them, um, Facebook them, uh, whatever. Who are you inviting to church this Sunday, and are you praying for them? So two things. You're going to pray for them, and you're going to invite them. God bless, and we're going to see you again tomorrow.